Hello and welcome to Psychometric Theory 1, Summer 2022. My name is John Kerrigan and I'm very excited to be your instructor for this course. This will be a six-week online asynchronous course, which means there are no official meeting times. However, the course will be set up in a way that is very structured and will also allow you to reach out to me at any time if you need it. To provide you with a brief overview of the course, the course is designed to provide um, an overview of basic but important topics and issues in educational and psychological testing and measurement. The course will cover psychological and statistical principles underlying test design, analysis, and interpretation with analysis with emphasis on classic psychometric theory, analysis of reliability and their estimation, the development, analysis, and use of both norm-referenced and criterion referenced tests, and an introduction to scaling techniques. Basically, you've all taken tests and possibly even developed tests as students and educators. However, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to ensure that an assessment that you're giving is created thoughtfully and produces reliable results, and also that valid inferences can be drawn from them. So in this course, we will take a look at the, the nuts and bolts and mechanics that go into doing just those things. There are also a couple of major course goals you will be able to understand the purpose and methods of score transformation, conduct a score transformation, and interpret results. For example, when a student sits for an SAT, how does getting 30 out of 58 math questions correct transform into a math score of a 480? So you learn about things like that. How do you obtain evidence for validity and reliability of assessments? Turns out there's a couple ways and a couple methods we can use we're going to learn principles and procedures for test construction and item development. And this is the most fun part. There's a lot of statistics here and we'll have an opportunity to design a class level test where we will analyze our own assessment and draw on principles of item analysis there too. And then we will learn how to use item level data to, to evaluate items to create reliable and valid tests. The second major goal is to be measurement literate. We want you to be able to walk away from the course experienced in evaluation methodology and be more critical and, and open-minded to um, assessment data interpretation in educational or behavioral research journals. In my experience teaching this course, most people are from K-12, some are from higher ed. So I'll try to draw on articles and examples that cover both spheres so that everybody feels like they're getting something out of it. I could not find one good textbook for this course. The Allen and Yen book is probably the best one I could find. However, not every chapter is is great. Some of them are very dense or, or not explained in the best way. So I do draw on a couple of different books, and I apologize for that. I know it's better to have one book, but I felt that some books did some chapters better than others. So what I've done is I've put all the books on Canvas. You don't need to pay for anything, and I'll just point you to which chapter you'll need to use from which book each week. You will also need to access SPSS for this course and Google Sheets. Um, directions are available on Canvas. For SPSS, you don't need to purchase it. Rutgers offers a free uh, virtual computer lab that allows you to access the SPSS program and use it for free that way. However, if you're thinking about doing a doctoral dissertation, it might be a good idea to grab it and have it for the future. Academic integrity, this goes without saying, this is a, a master's level course, so we expect that your work is your own. If it isn't, then we have to go down um, the steps uh, to pursue that further. However, I will offer collaborative assignments here or there where uh, roles will be clearly delineated. Office of Disability Services, if you need any accommodations, please feel free to let me know what those are so I can set them up for you. Since this is an online course and an asynchronous one at that, there's a strong emphasis on student-centered learning. I will be more of a facilitator and coordinator. I will make weekly videos. I will develop assignments. I'll give you feedback. I will give you um, chances to resubmit things. But the weekly pace of the course requires you to be very engaged and, and on top of things to be able to get the most out of what we're doing. So there is a little bit of self-driven learning that has to occur. Also, because we're not face-to-face, -face, a lot of the integrative work that we would do face-to-face -face is done on your own. But if you're not understanding something, again, please feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to help. Our weeks in this course will run Monday to Sunday, meaning I will open up the modules on Monday and then everything is due by Sunday night. So over that week-long period, like I said, I expect you to 
engage with the content for at least five days to get the most out of it. Successful online learners can be best known to use past experience to develop new learning, be motivated by intrinsic factors, set goals, evaluate and monitor the learning, develop a problem solving approach to learning, and select your own learning strategies and materials. In addition, Skills and actions recommended by students in an online course were developing a time management strategy, being active in discussions, staying motivated, asking questions, using materials, applying newly learned concepts, and then sharing what works best for you with the instructor and making connections with other students. So if this is your first time or maybe uh, one of your earlier attempts with online learning, try some of these strategies. They will definitely help you be successful in the course. Now, for the grading and for the topics. For a grading, 50% of your grade will come from weekly Canvas activities. And almost every single week, there will be an instructional video you'll have to watch. It is launched through PlayPosit, which will track your video watching and also ask questions with retakes. So you'll technically be able to get 100 on all of them because you'll have the opportunity to watch a video whenever you want and also complete uh, a retake if you don't get it right. There might be math problem sets in the beginning as we go over statistical principles, there will also be discussion boards here and there when we get into, say, reliability and validity. So there's like case uh, studies we'll take a look at. Um, sometimes there's a partner activity. It just depends. I try to vary what's being asked every week to make it interesting. And your uploads will either be a discussion, a written assignment to upload, um, or, or another type of activity. And the grades will be based on accuracy and completion. So I do look to see that what you're writing is correct and um, the math that you do is correct. And if that's nerve wracking or, or you feel like you'd like some feedback before that, as long as you submit your assignments by Friday, I will um, turn feedback around to you before Sunday night, the final chance to submit. So that option is always there. I'll, I'll check every Friday night to see who submitted work and if there's work submitted, I will provide feedback and you could use that or not to make corrections. Um, so that that's something that is offered and that's offered for some of the problem sets and um, individual submissions for discussion boards. I set those up so that there's their student driven and, and their student feedback. So those I won't provide feedback on, but anything involving a submission to me without any form of feedback, I will, um, you know, I will provide feedback if you submit it by Friday. So please definitely plan on doing that. Um, midterm exam. So that'll occur halfway through the course. That'll be between July 18th and July 20th. I will give you a three day window and four hours to complete the exam. The exam probably won't take four hours, but I'll have it time so that you can have all of that time if you need to take it. And then there's a final project for the course where we develop a class assessment and run a complete item analysis on the assessment. It's about a six page paper with appendices and some statistical procedures that need to be done along with a qualitative component. So that um, that I'll provide more details on as we get there. Unfortunately, this normally runs as a 15 week semester course. So I've had to take what's done in 15 weeks and fit it into six. So I've done the best I can to group topics based on um, similarity so that it, it seems like a coherent course, which means there's basically double the work each week than there would be in a regular academic semester. So this table just lists out the topics we'll be talking about. As you'll see, it's very math heavy in the beginning. We talk about um, the, the statistics behind assessment in the beginning, and then we move uh, in the second half more toward the actual test items themselves and making sure that they function properly, and um, we end up building our own assessments at the end. So again, notice that the weeks run from Sunday, uh, Monday to Sunday, every single week. And then our last week of class is um, August 2nd to August 7th, and our final paper will be due at the end of that time. And then I include the readings here for each week, so you can check out the chapters in the various books on Canvas. So with all that said, I hope that you enjoy the course. I encourage you to please reach out to me at any time if you have any questions. And here's to a good semester.